Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than what we've normally been doing in the past in that we're not going to be writing much code today but we're going to be learning a little bit more about how Python works and how we can take a prepackaged optimizer like we've been using the PyDFS lineup optimizer module for Python and we're going to learn how we can customize that locally on our machines so that we can add new sports to it, change some rules if we need to, maybe we'll use a different site that isn't built into the optimizer, um, and kind of give you a feel for how more professional algorithms, I guess, um, may be written and, and stored to access later. Um, so this will be a good introduction for anyone who has no familiarity with Python at all, um, or anybody who's looking to build their own system outside of Jupyter Notebooks where it's more of just kind of a, a you know, plug and play program to run rather than you know, going in and running each cell individually. Um, this will kind of give you more of an idea of what that would look like um, down the road. So let's go ahead and hop in. The first thing we're going to be able to do is identify where um, all of that code sits on our local machine. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Every single Python package that we pip installed or you pip installed elsewhere um, are probably going to be saved to the same space locally on your machine. Um, what that does is when you run pip install, it shoots up to the internet, it looks for that package, and then it takes all of that code and it downloads it to your local machine so that you can run it when you're offline. So if we don't know where that is, um, the easiest way I think is just to pip install a, a package that you already have. Uh, we're going to use the PyDFS lineup optimizer because that's what we're working with today. And we can see the very first line we get is requirement already satisfied, PyDF lineup optimizer in, and then it gives us this file path. Okay, That is more than likely going to be where all of your packages are installed at. So we can just copy that, open up our file explorer here, paste that in. And now we're in that folder specified. And according to Jupyter Notebooks, um, PyDFS lineup optimizer is already here. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down. Let's see if we can make this bigger for you guys to see. Yep, so as we can see, we got all these things here. Going to scroll down. You might, if you look through these, you're probably going to recognize things that you've installed before that you use. Hit Z's, we went too far. PyLint, Pigments, PyFlakes, PyDoc style, PyDFS lineup optimizer. So if we go ahead and double click in there, now we're going to come across what is essentially just a bunch of .py files. All right. Um, and I, I'd recommend you go ahead and take a, a peek here and figure out what we have. Um, we've got a handful of .py files, we've got a couple folders. If we open up the solvers folder, we're going to have kind of the same format as what we have here. We have a, a dunder init dunder python file, that's a double underscore, it's called a dunder generally. Um, but that's going to be your initialization uh, file. Then we can see constants, context, exceptions, exposure strategy, fantasy point strategy. Um, all things that probably sound familiar, and you can probably kind of guess what's going to be in it based on the name of the file. If we go to sites, we have kind of the same thing, a PyCache and its initialization file. And then we've got a different folder for each of our different sites here. So let's go ahead and pop open DraftKings. Well, we can see we've got a captain mode, a classic, and a tiers. And within each of those, we're going to have a settings, an importer, and an initialization file. Now, for the first time, on this channel at least, uh, we're going to be going outside of Jupyter Notebooks and opening up uh, an IDE. Um, you don't have to open an IDE, you could open it in a text editor would be fine. Um, just to show you an example, we're going to go ahead and close all of these. And then we're going to open those files that we were just looking at to take a look and see kind of what they are a little bit. So let's go back down to PyDFS lineup optimizer and I'm just going to grab and open all of them now so we can have them here to look at. Um, just so you're aware though, you're, you can open it with uh, a variety of things. 
you can open it with just notepad if you want. Um, it's going to be the same thing for you. See constants.py. If we open the constants here, it's the exact same thing. Okay, this is just more, has some extra bells and whistles for writing code. Um, like you can see the strings are one color, your class, your, your the class name is going to be a different color. So different types of data types and variables are going to be colored differently just to make it a little bit easier to read and understand. But if you don't have an IDE, it's not a big deal. Um, I use Spider a lot of the times. I've been using VS Code more for work lately, so I may be switching to that just so I can have one system I need to learn. Um, but you can do it in something as simple as a text editor. Um, I would not recommend Microsoft Word, but like a Notepad, Notepad++, anything like that will be fine. So if we take a look at this, this is going to be our constants.py file. And as we can guess, these are just, you know, declared variables. There's nothing that changes about them. The variable DraftKings equals a string DraftKings. The variable DraftKings captain mode equals a string DraftKings captain mode. So these files are going to be named in a way such that they're easy to find and they make sense with what's in them. And a benefit of doing it this way is that we can define things one time here and then we don't have to keep defining them every other place we want to use them, right? We just call this file and say, hey, from constants.py, I want to import site, or I want to import sport. Um, and to give you an idea of how you can kind of navigate through these, um, if we start on the, the initialization file, you can see we are importing a whole bunch of things, okay? And from all of them, we're pulling in all of these things and then we're defining a get optimizer function and this is what you actually use when you call the lineup optimizer okay you do get optimizer you define the site you define the sport and if there's any additional keyword arguments you want to put in you can put them in there and then that gives you you know it returns the results basically of that lineup optimizer site registry get settings so you get the settings for that site and that sport with those keyword arguments so if you are so inclined if you're a tinker like I am and you like to know how things work and you want to dig into the nitty-gritty this is where you want to start you can start from here you can say okay so we are getting from site and sport these string variables Okay, how are we defining those? We come up here, we can see from PyDFS lineup optimizer.constants, we are importing site and sport. So we go to constants, we can see site and sport. These are the acceptable variables to pass for the site and the sport for the lineup optimizer. So if we wanted to add something in here, or if we wanted a new site or a new sport, the first thing we need to do is add it to the list of acceptable variables that it can run on. Because if we try to run it on something that does not exist here, it's going to come back with an error and say that we passed invalid parameters. Next up, we return lineup optimizer with those settings, site and sport. Okay, so let's look for lineup optimizer. We have here from pydfs lineup optimizer dot lineup optimizer import lineup optimizer. All right, so we're going to go to lineup optimizer dot py, and we're importing this whoop, lineup optimizer class. And now you can see here or importing a bunch of other things as well. Okay, and we have some base rules. These are all gonna be variables. And our lineup optimizer, and this gets a little more complex because now we're dealing with classes and properties and inheritances and all of that. Things that we've not got to, and quite frankly, I don't think it's necessary to go through at this point in time. If you wanted to build something more professional, um, if you have aspirations of being a professional software engineer, um, coder, software developer, whatever, they, it would probably do you good to kind of go through and try and start understanding how these things work. Um, I would suggest not starting with this. I would suggest going somewhere and finding some online tutorials on what classes are and how to use them. Um, it's not terribly hard. Basically what we're doing is defining what a lineup optimizer is. We are giving it attributes. Um, that we can define so settings type base settings so you know we've got all of our, our settings here these are going to be the base settings which you see a lot of them are none because by default they're not being used they're all things that you can define uh, somewhere in here 
Um, it might not be something you pass the optimizer function in Jupyter Notebooks, but it is something that is being defined within this code base. So if you wanted to alter it, you can come in here and alter it. And it's basically how all of those different things are calculated. When you add player to lineup, okay, because this is a what we something we can call on the optimizer function is add player to lineup. This is what's happening. Okay, so if there's anything that isn't working how you think it should work and you want to go check it out and see how the code works that drives it, this is how you'd want to do it. Let's take a look at what else we're importing here. So let's look at fantasy point strategy. Um, so as it's nothing terribly complex here. We're defining get fantasy points per player, set lineup, standard fantasy point strategy is players points per game. Random fantasy point strategy. All right, here you have to define a min minimum deviation and a maximum deviation. The defaults are going to be 0 to 0.12 or 12% deviation. And then it defines the deep min and max deviation, so it will randomly choose a point value within that range. Yep, so player point per game times 1 plus negative 1 times the multiplier. So basically, you're taking either plus or minus up to 0 0.12%, 12%, multiplying it by the points per game, and that's what you get. You can do progressive, give player fantasy points, set previous lineup, etc. So basically, we're not going to go through each one of these. Um, I just wanted to kind of show you guys where to go. Um, one thing we'll be doing in the next video is actually adding a sport here, which I, as you can see, I've already added for myself. I will be walking through how I did that in the next video. Um, we'll be adding Dota 2, the eSport. Uh, DraftKings started doing Dota tournaments during their last major. Um, and with the, the big international world championships coming up next month, I think it, some folks might like to know how to do that because it's going to be similar to League of Legends. Uh, they're both uh, multiplayer online, massive online battle arena, multiplayer online MOBAs, however you, whatever the acronym means. Um, so it's similar, but it's different in how the rosters are constructed. Um, and we don't need to worry about how it's scored because we're not going to be doing any point projections for this. We're just going to show you how to add it in to the optimizer. And with that, you'll be able to take and take those same concepts and repeat it. If there's a different site that you use or another different sport that you use, you'll be able to do that on your own machines whenever you want. I just kind of wanted to touch on those key concepts with you and hopefully get everybody kind of tinkering on their own so they're ready when we dive into it next week. They're maybe a little more familiar with this and how it's set up. Um, and I do think it, it is... It would benefit you to understand how this optimizer works. Um, I believe that the step-by-step -step optimizer I made manually is still my most popular video on the channel. So I know that a lot of people out there like to know how to build it themselves and not just be able to plug it into an existing optimizer. So if that's something you'd like to learn how to do, this is definitely where you want to start. Yep, and one more thing to note here. Um, they all, they're going to have a lot of the same, the same setup. Um, you have your PyCache, your initialization file, PyCache, initialization, PyCache, initialization. Um, that's going to be pretty standard. Um, so if there were other Python packages you wanted to start exploring, uh, you're probably going to come across some very similar uh, organizational structures, at least there. And yeah, that's really it. Um, don't feel like you can't tinker or you might break something and then it won't work. All you have to do is pip uninstall the optimizer and then re-pip install it. Uninstalling it will get a clean sweep. Sometimes I have issues pip uninstalling in Jupyter Notebooks. Um, if that's the case for you as well, you can just come in here and delete the PyDFS lineup optimizer files from your site packages library. It pretty much does the same thing. I'm sure it's not a clean uninstall, but it, it's, it's done the job for me when I do mess something up and I need to uninstall and reinstall it. Um, so yeah. That's going to be all. Um, th this write-up here with screenshots and everything will be um, on my website. Uh, we give a shout-out to Dima Kudosh. I could very well be pronouncing that wrong. If I am, I apologize. Um, it's their GitHub page that the PyDFS lineup optimizer is uploaded to. Um, so I believe I gave them a shout-out when we first started using it. Uh, but just continually, if you... You know, there, there's some FAQs there, and you can see if they're actively working on it or not. 
um, if there's things you would like to see changed for the total distribution, not just what you do locally. Uh, feel free to interact with them there. I'm sure they'd appreciate knowing that people are using it actively and coming up with new ways to improve it. Um, so feel free to check out the website. You'll be able to download this file here. Uh, and you'll also be able to read through and kind of see the screenshots. So you don't have to hunt through the video if you're going back trying to look at things in the future. As usual, big thank you to everyone in the Patreon. Uh, most of this would not be possible without them in there. Um, it, it's great to have that that extra level of support. Um, really helps me get going. So uh, if anybody's interested in joining that community in the Patreon, uh, link in the description. You can get them for as little as five bucks a month. And shameless plug is over. Thank you to everyone in the Patreon. You are very appreciated. And I will see you all next week.